Hi, Pastor Nathan Decker with your hashtag Better Together Devotion for today. And this week I've been focusing on from where do sermons come from and, and what's going on in the pastor's study, so to speak, as he writes these things down to, to deliver them and prepares for Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, the, what, what Bishop Pennell called the relentless return of the Sabbath. So let me tell you, one of the things that I have within the office with me or within the study with me are everyone who attends and everyone I can imagine coming to the church. I, I bring the scriptures to the context. I bring the word, Jesus, into our lives, into our world. I imagine the context as it was within the story or the letter or the psalm or the song or, or whatever scripture is that I'm reading. I imagine what was going on then in the ancient world. What was going on in their hearts and their minds and their angst. And then I compare that with well, what's going on in our lives. What are we bringing? What's the little child that's struggling with the SOL thinking this week as they, they worry about the testing and the testing and the testing that's going on in school? What, what, what's the, the mom worried about and the dad worried about whenever they realize that you know next month they may not be able to pay their mortgage? What, what's, what's going on in the businessman or businesswoman's idea when they realize that, that things are, are not going as good as they want in their, their Main Street business? You see, all of the context... All of the stories that I hear as a pastor or that I experience in living in the community where, where I go to schools and volunteer in the lunchroom with, with kids that don't even attend church or, or where I, I hang out with, with running groups and, and go and listen at a bar while, while folks are talking about their lives, all of that gets filtered into the sermon, gets filtered into the word that is preached, gets filtered into the context. I imagine the context. I imagine who is with me in that room. Now, I, I don't have individual people. I, I'll be honest with you. That is one safeguard I always strive. If, if while writing a sermon, in the midst of the sermon writing, I start thinking about one person individually and, and, and distinctly, I go, oh my, I don't need to be doing that. I don't preach at people. That's not the point. I preach with people. If you know me, if you interact with me, whether it's online or in person or, or text messaging, however you interact with me, you are part of the pulpit that I stand in. You are part of the sermon that I deliver. You are part of the word of God that I hear as I'm listening to Jesus and as I proclaim. You're a part of it because we are together better we are together, united in this, in a community. There's a word from, from an African language called Ubuntu. Ubuntu, I even have a bracelet that has it on it. It says, I am because we are. That's especially true in the preaching event. Because if, if I'm doing it like I, I feel like and I'm called to be doing it correctly, then I'm not going to heaven and praying and silent up on the mountaintop and saying, oh God, deliver a message. No, I'm much more like Jesus, who did take time in prayer by himself, but also went out into the crowd, went out and listened and heard the cries of the needy and all that was going on. Know that that's happening. Every time you hear anyone preach or, or do an online devotion or write it, write it as you're reading a devotion or as you're reading scripture itself, all of the people that you know are with you and a part of you. Knowing that makes us better together.